If I'd have gone around the room, I guarantee you, depending on what generation you were raised in, I guarantee you I would have got a JFK answer. I would have gotten a Martin Luther King. That I would bet my house on. And probably a General Patton or someone like him, maybe General Schwarzkopf, someone that you identify from the military. I would have gotten some other people. I would have got other politicians, other social advocates. Okay, but, but that's what we think of. When we think of inspirational leadership, that's what we grew up envisioning that it looks like. Okay, And I think that's part of the problem. Because if that's what we're comparing ourselves to, how likely is it that we're going to be like any of those three figures? Okay. One of my concerns, by the way, I give this, I give this talk to uh, frontline leaders all over the company, but remember we designed it for retail? And we have one example where a retail leader, we were asking for inspirational icons, and they listed Will Ferrell and Adam Sandler. <laughs> so there is a generational uh, divide there. And I can, I can uh, no, I can't even see that. I'm sorry. Just don't see that as inspirational at all. Funny, yes, but not inspirational. But these are the kinds of people that we think of. And it doesn't do us a service. It doesn't do us the right justice in comparing ourselves to people like that because why were these people icons of inspiration? you got to go back and look at the circumstances in which they were making those particular topics that I chose for the videos. John F. Kennedy gave that speech in 1963 about putting a man on the moon before the end of the decade, as he says in a Boston accent. We say decade in Arkansas, where I come from, right? So, six years later, he's going to put a man on the moon. In 1963, we were woefully behind in the space race. Russia was way ahead of us. In fact, we thought we might be at a military disadvantage, right? We'd barely put a man in suborbit around the Earth, much less orbit into the moon. And yet, as you know, six years later, we walk on the moon. No other country's ever been there, okay? Martin Luther King, he makes that speech. That's the largest peace march in history at that point in time, also in 1963, interestingly enough, at the Mall in Washington. There was about half a million people there that day. Right? So he makes this wonderful speech, and to get there to make that speech, he had to face police dogs in Birmingham, spend nights in city jails, have water cannons turned on him, okay, to get to that point where he was deemed inspirational by the entire country. General George Patton leading troops in the battle on the eve of the greatest battle in humankind history, knowing that he was going to lose 70 to 80 percent of those soldiers in the next 24 to 48 hours, either through injury or to death, right? And yet, having to get those troops ready to go to battle, fought, fighting for a just cause. How likely is it that in your job, you're ever going to be called upon to send someone to the moon? Not likely. Now, you may want to do that on occasion, right? <laughs> but probably not going to happen to you. When are we going to be facing police dogs and water cannons? and our roles as leaders. We won't. When do we really have life and death struggles? We are bad about using military analogies in business, but we don't die, right? We don't risk getting a limb blown off. It ain't gonna happen. So to compare ourselves to people like that is a disservice to us because we can't be them. So I think the question for all of us as leaders, no matter where we are in the organization, what our level is, right, is what does inspirational leadership at all tell?